What's the guys? Matt Brown here. Folk. The lines.com. Let's talk the real first Thursday night football game of the year. We got the Bills and the Dolphins. A couple of good teams. A couple of teams everybody is expecting to make the playoffs this year. Everything we do, absolutely free, by the way. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below while you are here. You can see the Thursday Night Football odds page we've got. It's about two and a half pretty much across the board. So no matter where you're looking, it's going to be two and a half. Various juice, so be sure, as always, and shop around. And on the total side of things, 48 and a half seems to be the prevailing total out there, though a couple of 49s have popped. If you're looking for the under, be sure and shop around there as well. Uh, both these teams last week had to come back um, from deficits. That being said, both of the teams did come back and win. One maybe a little bit different than the other. Buffalo Bills basically just had Josh Allen put on his Superman cape and go out there and win the game himself against the Cardinals. And then you had the Jags, I'm not going to say completely give it away to the Dolphins, but look, when you're up 17-7, your guy's got the ball heading to the end zone and it's about to be 24-7. I'm not going to say the game's completely over. Game's pretty much over. Ball gets punched out. ATN fumbles. The Dolphins recover the ball in the end zone. Very next play, 80-yard touchdown to Tyreek Hill. You know, and the rest is, is history there. Jags don't score again. Um, that being said, listen, a win is a win is a win in the NFL. Winning is hard, and both these teams were able to find ways to come back and win these games. For me... If you take a look at this, we have a total, you know, sitting 48 and a half, 49. I have a pretty strong lean to the Dolphins in this one. Whenever we take a look at kind of what we're what we're up against whenever we're heading into this game, Josh Allen with the hand injury is completely off the injury report. However, even though he does have that hand injury, they got a depth defensive end in Javon Solomon that is doubtful for this game and rotational defensive end Dwayne Smoot is already out. So down a couple of defensive ends for the Bills. That being said, neither one of them are starters, but they are without starting corner Taron Johnson. So he is out for this one. So down a starting corner. On the Dolphins side of things, Elijah Mitchell and, and Devon A. Chan are both questionable. Mitchell, I mean, Elijah Campbell, I should say. He's a he's a backup defensive back. But A. Chan, of course, is pretty big that he's questionable because Raheem Mostert is already ruled out for the Dolphins in this game. If you're wondering about the weather in this thing, you're going to read about and hear about and people might overreact. Look, I, I went to about four different sites to look at the weather and kind of like did a my own little, never been to meteorology school, by the way. I've never taken one second. So I, I don't don't call me a weatherman. But uh, what I will say is looking at four different weather reports, it looks like it's going to rain during the day. Maybe it carries over a little bit into the game, but like nothing severe and the wind isn't supposed to be anything to worry about either. So... I'm not really looking at this as a, you know, some sort of something that we're going to handicap. That being said, as we always say, when there's no win, it's just rain. In theory, it should help the offenses because the receiver knows where he's going. Defensive back doesn't know where he's going. If the field is at least a little bit slippery, it should, in theory, help the offenses. But again, I digress. Let's get back over here to, to kind of breaking down the game and like I said, I have a pretty strong lean to the Dolphins. That being said, I'm not going to play the two and a half because I think there are some teams out there that you can play a different way for the same outcome. And then even if you don't get the outcome you think, you can still win your bet. And I think the Dolphins are one of those teams, which I don't see the Dolphins winning a game against the Bills in a low-scoring, grinded-out type of game. This Dolphins team is a high-flying offense. Defense is at least somewhat suspect. The Bills are coming in, down a starting corner. All those things... You look at the Dolphins' team total is sitting at 25 and a half in a game with a total of 48 and a half, 49. And so we, there's a couple of different paths, right, to this getting home. Like, sure, could they just cover the two and a half and somehow not score 26 points? I guess. That's not really the nature of this Dolphins' team, however. It seems like they're a team that needs to go out and kind of outscore their opponents. And... The other thing is, is in a game with a with a total this high, could this thing just get in a shootout and then Josh Allen somehow, you know, figure out a way to engineer some sort of last second heroic drive to beat the Dolphins or something? Sure. But the thing is, is it doesn't matter if we've already gotten over the 26 points, right? If this thing finishes 31-30, if this thing finishes 35-31 and 
and the Dolphins don't cover, it doesn't really matter. So while I have a lean towards the Dolphins, I think just the nature of this team, it's better to bet them just on the team total because I don't see too many low-scoring, grinded-out type wins for this team. I think if they win, a lot of times they're going to be scoring a decent amount of points. And so this actually gives me a little bit of a backup here. If this game does go into shootout mode and they come up on the bad end of it, we still win our bet, right, over the 25-and-a-half team total. So that's kind of where I'm at with this with the Dolphins. Um, second play that I'm going to go with is I'm actually going to bet Josh Allen under on his rushing. And, like, this is kind of a leap of faith thing here. And if you want to leave this one off your card, I'm completely fine with it. But this is something where it's early in the season. Josh Allen has a hand injury, so much so that he was wearing, like, a glove at practice and things like that. I just don't know in game number two if we're going to see Josh Allen just taking off left and right and risking anything further with that hand. I know, again, we're just kind of assuming things with all of that, but if you want to back some stuff up with numbers, this is his game log from last year. And we're sitting, by the way, it's 38 and a half is the rushing total. If we go back to Josh Allen, like he is definitely a mobile quarterback, a running quarterback, but I think maybe we put him in the same light as someone like Lamar, someone like we're going to be looking at with Jane Daniels, someone like we look at with Kyler Murray and all this. But like, if you look, the 38 and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he eclipsed the 38 and a half that he has to get to tomorrow six times out of 17 games last year. And I don't think you would say that Josh Allen is any more or less mobile this year or last year or anything like that. Like, he's pretty much the same player. He runs the ball, you can see, just, you know, seven, eight times a game. And so, here's the other thing about that. Like, a lot of times, these are like goal line carries. So, the maximum amount of yards he's going to get on these things anyway are, you know, two yards, three yards. You can't go any further if you're on the three yard line, you know? So he calls his number a lot at the goal line. And you can see, look at all these rushing touchdowns. It's like, those are short runs, you know? So for me, I'm going to go the under 38 and a half rushing yards for a couple of different reasons. Like I said, one, he just doesn't do it that often anyway. And two, I don't know if there's going to be really like Josh Allen design runs in this. Now there's always the Josh Allen YOLO, tuck it down, take off type deal. And hell, could he run? Could he have a 140 yard run? In this? I mean, sure. I mean, he could, but we're going to play the percentages here and we're going to think that uh, they're not going to do that to him with a, with a hurt hand in week two. So I think maybe we get a little bit more reserved, Josh Allen. That takes us to the second prop of this one. Going to close things out with a Keon Coleman prop. And sorry, I didn't have this all the way on the screen here for you guys. But uh, I can assure you this top line is Keon Coleman. And uh, with that, you can see in game number one, his first NFL career game, he got 22% of the target share with this team. He is the de facto number one for Josh Allen because they don't have anybody else. And so he's stepping in as a rookie and he just has to be the number one receiver. His reception prop is set at three and a half. If we think that this could be a high scoring game, if we think that the Dolphins could get ahead, if we think that they might alter their game plan, like I said, because of Josh Allen's hand and he doesn't run as much, whatever, and there's a, little, there's a few more targets to go around. Keon Coleman as the number one receiver, we're only asking for four catches out of him do I expect Dalton Kincaid to be more uh in uh, involved in this game than he was in game one sure but even if Dalton Kincaid gets two or three more targets it doesn't really matter because that doesn't affect Keon Coleman's role all that much and honestly I, I'm curious to see how the Dolphins play defense in this one as well they ran cover three about 40 percent of the time against the Jags cover three is a defense that prevents you know deep ball type stuff but like you can you can hit people in the flats and on little short curls and things like that. And if that's the case, then Keon Coleman's getting seven catches in this game, right? I mean, he'll just go dink dunk and stuff like that down the field. I'll be curious to see if the Dolphins adjust how they, they play defense against the Bills in this thing. But uh, either way, I still feel pretty confident in the, again, de facto wide receiver one in Keon Coleman getting to four catches in a game with a total of 49 in a game which the Bills might be playing catch up in in my personal opinion so those are the three bets for me dolphins over 25 and a half team total josh allen under 38 and a half rush yards and keon coleman 
over three and a half receptions. Guys, everything we do, absolutely free here. So please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're talking everything all season long. And if you want to get into the discussion, even 24 seven up here, right top right hand corner, that is the discord. That is absolutely free as well. Go in, talk all the sports, NFL, talk college football, basketball starts up. You can get that going. We'll be talking playoff baseball in there. And of course, some, uh, fall swing golf as well going on over there in the discord. So appreciate all your support. Go ahead. Like I said, hit that, hit, uh, hit that subscribe button and let us know in the comments how you are playing this game. Good luck on all your Thursday night football bets.